Welcome to Welcome Home Doggy, a show where we talk about creating a better quality of life for all dogs. I'm your host, Ariana Lasha, and today I'll be speaking with Michelle Stern, founder of Pooch Parenting. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining us via Zoom. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Go ahead and tell our audience where you're joining us from. I am in the sunny Bay Area of California. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us all the way over here on the East Coast. So please go ahead and tell us, what is Pooch Parenting? Well, I am a certified professional dog trainer and behavior consultant and I specialize in helping families with children and dogs. Okay, so children, people that are starting families, tell us about that. Like if I was looking to start a family, which I'm not anytime soon, but if I was <laughs> and I already had a dog, uh, what, are, what are your services look like for that? Well, it's really been quite an interesting year, you know, with the pandemic, of course, people have been all over the place, but I devoted a lot of my time into building some online courses that people can take at their convenience so that I can answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get. One of which is, how do I get my dog ready for a new baby? So I have an online course now called Preparing Dog for New Baby. And then the next problem that happens is oftentimes dogs are fine once the baby roll, you know, comes around and they're doing okay and the parents are learning how to navigate that juggle of how do I divide my time between the dogs and the kids. But then once the kiddos get mobile, it's a whole other ball game. And a lot of dogs are not really thrilled at competing for space and resources once the child is mobile. So the next class that I built was called preparing, no, called parenting toddlers and dogs. I get them all mixed up in my head. Um, yeah, so parenting toddlers and dogs. And so that's another on-demand uh, class that I can offer to support parents. And then I've got some other specific workshops like your first week home. And that one is really interesting because it addresses one of the most popular questions I get, which is how do I even introduce my dog and new baby in the first place? Because there's a lot of misconceptions because of Instagram. So love it or hate it. Instagram can set people up to fail because people are sharing some really unsafe pictures. So I'm trying to set people up so that they don't replicate those mistakes that they see online. Well, like you said, it is a big adjustment, not just for people, but for animals too. So I think that's awesome that you offer training and services to get dogs used to having this whole brand new little person in their homes and in their space. Yeah. You know, it's, I was just going to say, it's, it's an ongoing process, right? Because first you're expecting or adopting and you're trying to figure things out before the baby's even there. Then you have to learn how to adapt your whole world to this new creature. Then the baby's moving, right? And then there's new stages constantly. There's always something changing. And just when you think you have it figured out as a parent, the animals go and change something up on you and make it even harder. And so I did also start an online membership for parents so that they can parent kids and dogs with a little less chaos. And my goal as one mother to another is to support them in that process of juggling everything and trying to help keep them sane, keep everybody safe. And then my little secret, like, goal, I guess, is to keep dogs out of shelters because if we can set parents up for success, then there's way less of a chance that a dog might bite a child and end up in the shelter or euthanized. Absolutely. So you're getting ahead of the game, really. So what should, um, you know, what do you teach dogs when you're training them before somebody brings their baby home? What does the training part look like? That's a really good question. So 
I'm going to have to give you a lame answer, which is it depends because all dogs are different. And so there are a variety of skills that are really helpful for dogs to have under their belt, so to speak, so that they can just be a good housemate. Because at the end of the day, that's really what anybody wants when they have a precious little new creature in their home is a dog that will be safe to live with, a dog that respects boundaries, doesn't jump into the crib, for example, charge through baby gates. Um, and so we, one of the main things though that I really try to get people to help their dog with is to learn how to be comfortable on the other side of a baby gate or to be comfortable in a pen. Um, pens are great because we can use pens to either put the child in a pen to contain the kiddo or we can put the dog in a pen, right? And sometimes we rotate the two because maybe the toddler wants to run around, but that triggers the dog who then starts to chase it. Obviously, that's going to cause all kinds of problems. And so what we need to do is figure out different ways that we can support the dog in feeling relaxed when there's something exciting happening in its environment. So that's generally where we start, but it depends because every dog is unique and different. Okay. And so are your services, are they offered all online or do you do any in-person training? You know, I used to, I used to see clients. I would go to clients' homes and we would do some classes out on the town where we could work with dogs in the real environment where the families want to go. Um, but of course, pandemic. So um, now I see all of my clients over video. And this is a blessing because there are a lot of families who live in remote locations where there are no positive reinforcement dog training professionals. And so it's great because I can provide my services to those families regardless of where they live. Time zones can be a little tricky to contend with, but we've we figured it out. I was even able to consult with a family in Singapore recently. So that was pretty exciting. Yeah, that was really fun. We're working to go international. <laughs> yeah. So let's say you have a client and they use your services, they end up having their baby. Do you, do you ever get feedback on how that process went or do they tell you how everything goes? Yes, yes and no. I think once the baby's born, usually people are too overwhelmed to sit and think, oh, I gotta tell Michelle that it worked out great. And actually collecting testimonials is something that I would like to do a better job of. But I have been saving little screenshots here and there of people telling me, oh my gosh, um, I had one mom tell me I saved her sanity. So that's pretty much like the poster that I should have everywhere. Um, and I do hear a lot of relief. I was working with a family recently. They have a Labradoodle that's huge, like just the biggest Labradoodle you've ever seen. And he was having a lot of trouble containing his feelings, shall we say. He was very boisterous. They have a five-year-old and the mom is pregnant. And so we had to do a lot of work to help that dog learn to calm down and learn to settle because he would get so excited that he would start biting all of the family members. And nobody wants a 90 pound dog biting you, even if it's out of excitement, because biting is biting. It's, it, it can hurt when you're so excited like this dog was. And, and I just got an email from him saying what progress they've made and how much fun it was to start playing some of the games that I taught his family to play. So I do get feedback sometimes, it's good. I'm excited, will you tell us some about these games or how you generally introduce a dog to a new baby? Yes, so those are two different things. So games tend to be when we want the energy to be high or when we want to try to direct the dog away from something it might be interested in and shift that attention to something different. And so games often depend on the kind of relationship you have with your dog. So it's really helpful when we can get our dogs to look to us for guidance and fun, right? When we have a new baby, um, what we're trying to do on the other hand is try to take the energy down. And it really helps to have the dog on a leash so that we can lead the dog away. Sometimes with food, we can toss treats so that we can lead the dog away because the last thing we want in this case is for the dog to be like focusing and obsessing on the baby. Some dogs can see the baby as prey and it's pretty scary. And so we need to be able to move them away. Okay. 
well, I like how there's different areas and you talked about hyping them up and taking them down. There's a lot of like layers that go into it. And a lot of what you do focuses on the preparation before a baby comes. But what if you're in a situation where you've got like a toddler or a young child in the house and the dog just isn't getting along in that situation? What do you do there? That's a really good question. So some dogs react poorly to toddlers because they are scared. Because let's be real, toddlers are crazy little alien creatures. They scream a lot and they fall down a lot and they move fast sometimes and they move slow sometimes. And so they're very unpredictable. And for a dog that might be anxious, that's a really hard companion to have around. So some dogs will growl at a toddler and a lot of parents really freak out and think, oh my gosh, this is the end. I can't keep my dog anymore because my dog is growling at my toddler, but I want him to kind of hold the phone there and say, wait, let's first of all, recognize what growling is. And growling is a nice warning. It's kind of like the smoke detector before your house erupts in flames or the yellow light in the traffic signal. The, the growl is a warning and your dog is communicating and we need to celebrate that. And we need to say, whoa, you must be really uncomfortable when you're telling me that you're uncomfortable. And it's a good thing too, because if I didn't listen to that growl, your next step would probably be to bite. So a lot of it is learning to understand the dog. So how is the dog feeling? Learning to recognize dog body language. Those are really important pieces. And I do spend a lot of time on that inside my membership. So more specifically, if you were like going to give me advice right now, so say my dog, you know, exhibited behavior of growling, but then he advanced and he is like nipping or biting. How do you handle that specifically? Well, I would make sure that you had management in place because honestly, at the end of the day, if we prevent your child from having access to your dog, then your dog won't be biting your child. So at the very first step we would say all right we need to up our management you need to up your parenting game and that's hard for people to hear sometimes but if a dog has no access to the child the dog won't bite the child so we need to put some management things like baby gates and other resources in place i have lists of things that are my favorites you know because i've used so many different ones um to really set the dog up for success. I mean, if we can prevent an accident, that's the goal. But let's say um, I got a call, for example, from a woman. She was really upset because her mother, so the grandma, was there babysitting. And the dog bit the toddler on the grandma's watch. And she was horrified and totally upset and feeling really guilty about it. But the problem is, is there was a, there was a, kind of a gap in the instructions, right? That the parents forgot to mention, by the way, if our dog has a bone, we need to make sure that they're in another room with the door closed, right? So we have to also be sure that we're setting up all of our caregivers for success and that we are transferring really crucial, potentially life-saving information to anybody who may be interacting with the dogs and kids at the same time. Okay, and so, Obviously, it's a big change, like we said, on the parents, but being a big change on dogs as well, you know, dogs can be like sensitive or just like not used to this change. So how do you handle that? Or how do dogs like react? Do they get anxious when new babies come? Do they get like more excited? Do they get jealous? Some, some of all of the above. Yes. I feel like I could tick off all those boxes. It's like a multiple choice question. Yes, 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 yes. It depends on the dog. There are some dogs that are so chill and that are like, whatever, you know, I have one member inside my membership and she has a dog who is two dogs who are deaf and one dog, one of those two dogs is also blind. <laughs> And so I was talking to her yesterday about how her dogs are adapting because she has a nine week old infant. And she said, well, the great thing is, is they're not triggered by the baby's crying because they can't hear it. But on the other hand, they finally realize there's a smell of a new creature in the house. And so even though they have some sensory deprivation in some regards, they don't have it here. And so that's been really interesting for her. Um, again, that's where a lot of the uh, activities that I like to do with my members come into play, where we can reward calmness, help the dog to repeat behavior that they're practicing. So one simple idea that you can do is if your dog is laying down, for example, 
and they're just kind of chilling, you can casually walk up to them, put a little treat between their paws, keep on going. The dog's going to be like, what the heck just happened? I just got paid for laying here. Well, the beauty of this is if you do this randomly throughout the day, we're doing what we call capturing calmness. And the dog is likely to do these behaviors more because we're rewarding them for those behaviors. Now, when you're a parent with a kid in the house, especially with a toddler in the house, we need as much calmness as we can get. Absolutely. I'm sure. <laughs> So when you are getting a new dog used to a new baby, does it help to like let them sniff the baby blankets or what are some ways, other ways? <laughs> That's a really popular question. And I do address that in my first week home workshop because a lot of people have been told bring home the baby blanket from the hospital for the dog to sniff. But I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say you have a girlfriend who is bringing home a, a date to you for dinner for the first time. Okay. So you're like going to approve or not approve of this person, whoever their partner may be. You do not ask to sniff the partner's socks before they come over. Do you, you don't call up your friend and you're like, dude, I need a, a pair of the socks of your date. You don't do that. And there's a, but I mean, that's a whole different story. <laughs> but the idea is, is that just sniffing something doesn't change how you feel about something, right? And so the way that most people do the sniffing the blanket whole situation is not going to influence the dog's reaction to the baby. It may make the dog familiar with the smell of the baby, but really, if we're being honest, the mama is likely leaking teeny tiny bits of amniotic fluid before the baby's even born. And so the dog already smelled the baby. So it's not revelatory. Or if a parent comes home, they have the smell of the baby on their clothes because they've been holding the baby and that's adequate. So that doesn't really make that much of a difference. And it's clear to me and everyone watching that you're very knowledgeable in all of this. How long um, have you been practicing pooch parenting? Well, pooch parenting is about three years old. Um, I have been a dog person my entire life. So as a child, I was a bather in a dog grooming shop when I was a teenager, I guess. Before that, I volunteered at a shelter, did animal camps and things like that. Um, Worked as a bather in a dog grooming shop again. Then when I was older, went back to that same shelter, did years there and worked for veterinarians offices as well. Um, and then I taught high school and did some other things. I ran a cooking school for kids, which was super fun, um, but found myself back with my first true love, which is animals and being able to really combine my experience as a mother and as a teacher, I have 16 years of teaching experience, and to put that all together so that I can teach, support, coach parents, because I've been in their shoes. I know what it's like to live with a hard dog. I know what it's like to live with a reasonably easy dog. So I've got both ends of that. I have two children, one biological, one adopted. So I know what it's like to introduce dogs to kids in different ways. Um, and I'm filled with compassion. And so I think that um, pooch parenting is a really beautiful combination of my lifetime of skills. And what sets me apart from a lot of other dog trainers is that I am actually a mom with teaching experience. And so I can really support and nurture um, the parent side because a lot of dog trainers are unfamiliar with kids. And may want to run the other direction if they find out that their client has a toddler. Cause you know, it does take some special training or experience at least to be able to help a family predict some of the behavior challenges that they're going to interact with in terms of their dog and their toddler. Cause if you weren't familiar with the fact that babies or toddlers grab things without being aware of their motor skills, then you're not going to be able to set that dog who has fluffy fur up for success because they end up getting their hair pulled all the time. So say I, you know, if someone's like getting ready to add a new family member or they realize, Hey, we need like some training. How do your classes work? Like, are you able to select specifically off your needs based off of how your classes work? Yes. So I guess it depends on what the person's looking for. So if they are pregnant or in the process of adopting a child and they want to get their dog ready 
I've got that class ready to go. It's on demand. You can take it when you want. If you want to know how to introduce your dog and baby and learn how safe sleep has to happen in the house to prevent accidents while you're not supervising because you're sleeping, then I've got the workshop for that. Then I do consulting. So if, for example, you have a unique situation or some odd circumstances that are maybe special to you or your dog, then I can meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. We can either do a bundle or we can do, um, you know, a simple single consult where I can answer your questions and then follow up with you later. So there's a variety of different things you can do. And then of course my membership is ongoing support. So that's a monthly membership. And I have some people join for a month or two and some people stay for a whole year. Okay. And I just saw one of your very friends walk across in the background. Who was that? That's Pippin. He is an 18 month old border terrier and He's having surgery tomorrow to be neutered. So I'm going to try to make sure that he has a real special day today. Yeah, well, he just made his first television appearance, appearance so it's pretty special. Was there anything else that you wanted to add or any specific stories, anything you wanted to tell us? I think that there are so many kinds of people who need support when they have a dog. And whether you're a grandparent, and you have grandkids coming to visit, you need to prepare your dog for that. And whether you are you know, pregnant, adopting, have a toddler, or even have tweens, sometimes tweens are kind of ambivalent about the dog. Um, it's really fun to spend time together doing family-friendly activities that bring everybody together and build a relationship with every family member and the dog. And at the end of the day, the more of a bond you have with your dog, the less likely it is that accidents will happen and that the dog may make a mistake that costs the dog or somebody else's life. So if someone decides that they are ready to move forward with some of your classes, how should they get in touch with you? Thank you so much for asking. So my website is poochparenting.net. They can email me through that website. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Pooch Parenting. And if anybody is interested in the ongoing support, they can get on the wait list for my membership, which is at safekidsanddogs.com. Oh, and I have a podcast. This is pretty new, so I always forget to mention it. Um, I have about 18 episodes in, um, and it's one of the only podcasts available for parents with dogs. And I approach parenting from both sides. So I bring in parenting specialists to help parents cope with the stress of raising kids and dogs at the same time. And then I also bring in dog training experts to tackle some common behavior problems that family dogs often have. And that is called Pooch Parenting. You can find it on iTunes or any podcast app of your choice. Oh, well, that is exciting. And I'm definitely we're gonna check it out just to I mean hey we can all use some tips for our, our furry friends right <laughs> yes that is true thank you well thank you so much for joining us today Michelle thank you for having me for more information on today's guest please visit our website remember to subscribe to our YouTube like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram I'm your host Ariana Lasha and this is Welcome Home Doggy